Hello again, welcome back to Asgard, and welcome back to Dungeons, Dragons, and Space Shuttles. So, since last episode, I have been very, very busy uh, getting some stuff together um, and getting us ready to do some more automation type stuff, or stuff related to automation. I was actually torn, uh, on this episode, I was torn between starting into, uh, you know, some more magic expansion, um, or doing a bit more with automation. Another thing I'd like to start working towards is maybe heading into space before too long, but I want to wait until we get the automation where I want it to be, and there's a couple things that I want to do before we go into space, before we even start down that road, um, which I'm dreading. <laughs> I'm dreading, actually, but uh, hopefully we'll, we'll pass through it pretty quick. So, um, But anyways, I have done a bit more automation. Uh, nothing over here. Um, I've just got this set up. I haven't actually made the automation interfaces. They take a little bit longer than the other things to craft at the moment. So, um, But I did get all this stuff plugged up with XNet, like we talked about last episode, and I expanded on some stuff. There is a third compactor here now. Um, this one is set up to make Constantin plates, van, uh, Vanadium plates, and then the six different uh, mystical crops plates. Of course, right now we're not making Insanium and, and Supremium and uh, Superium plates and all that, but I went ahead and did a lot of automation for mystical agriculture, and with refined storage, of course, we can just shift-click in for all those recipes. Um, also, rolling machines are set up to make um, buckets and to make hoppers. So that's in place. Um, I also need to get a few more things like fences and uh, sails and stuff like that in place, but we'll get that. And then also our grinder is set up that makes our basalt dust and it's automated um, and then over here you can see I've made some recipes and that's actually a recipe it's the gold dank null panel but it doesn't show up as anything on this and then over here there's recipes for the different ingots as well um, and then over here this is just a really easy automation setup for the atomic reconstructor so basically power goes into that items are collected from this range collector, which is whitelisted to um, collect these six different blocks um, that this thing makes. And then eventually we might add the relays to that as well, you know, the item relays if I do some automation with those. And so that way we can just craft one and then cycle it. Um, and then there's an automatic precision dropper right here that drops onto the pressure plate. Um, this is set to pulse redstone, so whenever something drops, it pulses. Um, I actually don't, <clears throat> this is actually the most recent thing I was setting up. And we are going to need a block opposite this, something I totally forgot about, um, for this pulse to actually hit. So the design's not finished, and this is just kind of, I got the setup set up, um, but I haven't, I haven't finished setting, uh, designing it. So, um, And then there's a crafter up here to make the six different blocks. So, And then the items will get pulled out there, and that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's really all there is to it. So, um, Now if we pop... Let's see, downstairs there's not really anything. Well, there is one thing. There actually is one thing. Right out here I've set this up and we might be using this today. I've got some stuff in place for this. Um, but these of course are Tinker's Construct uh, smelteries. And I've actually got a little area back in here and that's just a door made with the Melissa's Doors uh, door factory. Um, but you can see back here we've got some smeltery drains and then I've made casting tables each with ingots um, where it can pump out ingots. Now of course normally it would probably be faster to pump out blocks but um, some things don't have a block variant like ferroboron and so we're going to be pumping it out into ingot casts. And then I've got a, a XNet controller here and a power cell and then it feeds the items into this chest and we're going to do some automation uh, down here pretty soon and then right here there's a couple cables that come in uh, where the crafters are going to go uh, you know to set this to set this up for automation so um and, but if we head upstairs got a couple more things i want to show you you can see there's some cables right here going on and what i've set up up here uh, of course i have expanded on carpenters so we have additional things like void upgrades and upgrade templates which were given a carpenter recipe so that they make more and uh yeah and we don't have to do the automation interface which is it's kind of funny because um they were made a whole lot cheaper. Like we were going to have to do this to make one and now we make two at a time. And this of course we were going to have to do this to make two and now we make four at a time. So it's cheaper and it has more output. Um, 
And then in addition, right here, I've, I've set up a recipe for the reinforced upgrade kits and the hardened upgrade kits, and they're being fed liquid crystalline. Um, also the range add-on. Oh, um, by the way, just really, really fast, this is automatically being fed uh, methane gas now from XNet from the bottom. So that's coming in there. Um, another fluid transposer, this one gets fed water, and this is for making the coolant cells. Um, so basically I just pump in an empty cell and it makes coolant. Um, but I am going to have to set up a glacial precipitator soon so that we can start automatically producing ice. Um, we'll have to get that up and going. But this is liquid setup. At long last, we have consolidated our liquids. So instead of having that magma crucible that was over here, um, I pulled it off and I set up three more, one, one of which is we're not using at the moment. Um, but one magma crucible is cooking down glowstone. It goes into here. These are just stone tanks, mainly for looks. I know they're not the best tanks and I could make something better, but I wanted something that stacks four high. It doesn't store an astronomical amount and it kind of, the, the border on the, the tank actually fits this area. So I just went with stone tanks. Plus they stack their effect and, and all that good stuff. So energized glowstone. And then this one is of course destabilized redstone. Right here is silicon, which is, it has an output routing node with a fluid filter uh, that's getting silicon from the basement. So these are set up on dedicated lines. Generally, whenever you use fluids um, with blood magic, you need to have a dedicated line. That means a master node, an input, and an output. You have to use a fluid filter and put a bucket of the fluid into there. So otherwise, if you try to do multiple fluids, multiple outputs, multiple inputs, it starts acting up. So each of these has just one dedicated master node, one dedicated input, one dedicated output. So it goes into here. Um, and then right here, another eternal water block that's producing water. And it'll fill this thing like instantly. Uh, <laughs> then right here, we have a stone tank. This is getting fruit juice. And I'll show you where, what that's from here in just a second. Uh, that was just something that I set up for this over here. Um, this is a setup that we did forever ago, and I just went ahead and added a recipe, basically. Uh, this one right here is liquid crystalline, which I'm feeding sapphires because I have a lot of those. And then uh, this one, of course, doesn't have anything. This one is super glue from downstairs. This one is methane gas from right over here. And this is set up the same way that we used to have it with hummus um, and then our tree fluid extractors. Basically, I just moved them from the, the, the bottom floor there. So um, whenever we make hummus, now that we've got more machines, what we can do is we can do the carpenter recipe right here that takes a little bit of water, some dirt, and some mulch, and uh, which I'm actually almost out of dirt, but I have dirt essence, so it's not a big deal. Um, but the mulch is coming from, I actually have a mechanical squeezer that is squeezing down apples. And the reason I did the mechanical squeezer is because it is a 100% chance to get mulch, whereas if we go with the forestry squeezer, um, it's I think with apples it's only like a 5% chance if I recall. Uh, no, it's a 20% chance, but still 100% whole lot better than 20%. So if we pop down here, just really, really quickly to show you that. Uh, we've got mulch right over here. So 14 and a half stacks of mulch. Um, and that's basically where all my dirt went, <laughs> was making hummus. And then uh, right here is our mechanical squeezer. Um, it's actually just set to auto eject. And so it auto ejects into the stone tank, which has the input routing node. And there's our master nodes. This is for the silicon, the glue, and the fruit juice. And then I also did a little bit of work outside. Nothing too, too major. I planted some trees and did some planning uh, for roadways. So you can see there's a little thing here that comes out and then it goes out over here. And this is basically where our main roads are gonna be throughout this area. So, and then I've still got a little bit more to do. I'm sure you can imagine this, uh, it took a bit to get all this stuff done to where we need it to be. So I've got to connect these two over and then I'll probably put a little, um, a little split in there. But anyways, just some of the stuff that we're gonna be working on um, and the layout of some of this big section, this big empty section. So of course I still have to work on roads that come out this way and then stuff that comes out along through here and then I also built this little area out a little bit more, that bridge um, walkway thing that comes out here, and then it connects up into this area, which we're gonna get into here fairly soon. Um, but I think that gets you guys all caught up on what I was working on between episodes. Basically, at this point, I'm just doing a lot of automation, which is all pretty much stuff that we've covered. 
Um, I, I wanted to, I do want to cover the Tinker's Construct alloys on camera because I think that's going to be something that we'll probably have a lot of questions about um, regarding, but we will be doing this on camera. So, Okay, but on to what we're going to be working on today. Um, I've actually got a few things put together or, well, automated. I'm going to go ahead and, um, well, actually, before I do that, let me... Okay, I've got I've got 344 intermedium. I did process some of these down. Um, I want to order uh, eight intermedium plates. So let's go ahead and order that. And then I also want to order some harvesters. Let me get. Oh, we'll start with four. What am I missing? Okay, that's an easy fix. We'll go ahead and just teach you how to make bronze blocks. There we go. We're kind of just cleaning up recipes as I find them at this point. All right, let's go ahead and order four harvesters. And that's probably going to take a little while to get done. Um, but our eight intermediate plates are done. So let's go ahead and grab those. And I've got something over here that's pretty well prepped. It's actually surprisingly cheap. And my most recent um, interactions video got me thinking about it. And it was like, oh, yeah, we should try this out and it is very very cheap it requires a little bit of liquid crystalline four single batteries uh, data storage circuit energy extractors lumium plates I mean pretty much all of this we have automated right so it's the wireless energy transfer nodes from cyclic the energy transfer nodes and you actually get two of these per craft and this is actually true for all of the cyclic wireless stuff um, item transfer nodes not expensive it does take some ESO um, but not terribly expensive and then the fluid transfer node requires eyes of ender or copper tank but also still very very cheap there is no automation um, recipe for this but it's also not something that we necessarily need automated in truth so we're just gonna make um, a batch of two for right now and you know I might make another craft or two um, as time goes on, but it's not something that I think we're going to need a lot of. So, and then let's go ahead and get ourselves some GPS markers. Let's go ahead and get like, yeah, we'll make 10. I think they only hold like nine locations, if I recall, but that'll be fine. And this is waiting to make the bronze plates because it's making the iron plates. And basically something that we really need to do soon is we need to get into... Uh, this right here, the profiling bench, it's not that expensive to make it. And with that, I'll be able to uh, to start making these auxiliary reception coils to upgrade speed, um, which is going to be great. And actually, there's a gear, let's see, the gear working die. I could use that. Uh -huh. yeah, I could use that to make gears. So I might do that. And then we'll have, only for the gears that we can't just craft, um, well, I mean, we can craft like all of them, but they take another material input, so that's not really ideal. And I also need to go ahead and order a power cell and a power cell card and get those ordered because we're going to need, um, we're going to need those. Also, uh, nodes. I've actually got some nodes made up here, so output nodes, input nodes. Um, master routing node, which I guess, I don't know if I want to do this as a separate system, because it's just going to make things a little bit easier for us, um, and it'll actually kind of work out better. Oh, it's already finished the, uh, really? Yeah, it's already finished the power cell, the power cell card. Oh, uh, <laughs> I was wondering what was holding it up, because it says processing 49 iron and 28 sticks for the harvester and I forgot I had set this up so basically this just pumps out into here and I ordered how many harvesters four um, and so what this is for of course this is this little setup here so I have to manually craft these and actually it takes the same amount of materials to make um, axes as it does pickaxes okay there's four iron picks and then what we can do is we can just throw this into there and it'll register it Okay, now our four harvesters are done. Awesome. Okay. And I think that's most everything. And what we're going to be doing, if you hadn't guessed, 
we are going to be doing the auto farming and processing. Well, the auto farming part. Um, the processing part will take a little bit longer for what I want, I think. Even though what I might do is actually just set up recipes um, so that it knows how to craft the things and maybe not keep them, you know, keep them on hand. I, actually, I think that's what I'll probably do because that way I can just leave it in essence form because something like, say, Electrotene, um, which I'm actually using this less, mainly just using it for ingots at this point because Electrotene I'm getting from the ore. But, you know, this has two different uses and some things are mixed. And so I think in this series, I think I'd rather do the all the processing through our refined storage system instead of having it automatically processed out of the farm. So I think that's what we'll do. Oh, and uh, before I forget, one thing I want to show you is like the fluids. Um, all of our stone tanks are set here to extract, just general extract. And then like the carpenters that insert, it's on channel 7. And I've just put filters in there. So super glue goes in that one, and that one, and that one, and then water goes in that. Um, and then that is, well that's more super glue, and then there's more super glue. <laughs> Uh, liquid crystalline and silicon and so on. So that's how I'm handling uh, the fluids and feeding them into the carpenters. The same with the fluid transposers and all that stuff. So, um, But okay, so let's go ahead and link our power cell card. So that's connected. And then what we're going to do is we are going to pop out to the farm area, which now that we've got our harvesters, I'm going to get back working on the farm area because, you know, I've kind of got... Uh, more of a reason to work more on the farm area. Um, if we pop down here, what we're going to do is we're going to count out the harvester does a 15 by 15. So we're going to go ahead and count out 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and on the 8th one, and then we're going to pull up that block there. And then we'll just put down a harvester right there, and then we can replace that block. So that harvester is going to cover out to here, right? And then we'll come out, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And so this is where it gets a little bit tricky because I didn't, I did these 20 long and not 15 long. 15 long is what I should have done, but I don't know. <laughs> Originally when I was setting this up, I had a different plan and that was I was going to use Steve's carts to farm this and then it was like oh wait a second Steve's carts can't farm this um, because it's only going to be able to farm like the vanilla crop so then I was like okay well change of mind uh, change of plans and I was like oh yeah harvesters but um, I might not even farm I don't know I'm going to give that some thought so what I'm going to do is um, I can't remember if I blocked this area off I want to say that I did not it doesn't look like that I did all right, so what I'm going to do, I'm going to pop back over to here, and I'm just going to block off this section for right now, just so we don't have any mobs coming through there. Uh, well, don't want to put it there. We'll do that. Okay, and so that way no mobs can come through. And I think for right now, I'm just going to do this one, and then I'll figure out how I want to farm the rest of that. Technically, I could do the plant gatherers and... and and stuff from industrial foregoing the plant gatherer and sower but the thing is then I've got to double up on machines and I won't be able to keep the nice limes that I've got because it plants in quadrants um, and so that doesn't quite solve it uh, what I want to do here so I think what we might do is maybe just uh, if it comes down to it I might just put a harvester like right here so it can harvest the rest of the area uh, but for right now, it's actually not a big deal. So we've got our harvester there, and that's great. And we're actually going to be doing a little bit of work down in these sections here soon. So um, for what they're going to be. This one just connects out to the tree farm. Okay. So let's pop through. And we'll do this the same way. We'll start from this end. Okay, and we'll put a harvester down right there. And a block in front of it, or not that block. <laughs> Put the blue shist. That way, this these are actually going to be out of sight. You're not even going to be able to see them. And that's still going to be 30 plots um, between the two. 
So I'm really only losing out on 10 plots right now, and then I can always add another harvester and, and farm these plots. This is five wide. Yeah, so I would I would have to have a harvester there and a harvester here uh, to do it that way. So for right now, I'm not going to worry about that, but we will... Um, I think we will worry about it before too long. So, Okay, and let's go ahead and set up our harvesters and get these running. So we're going to say output. We're going to put our card in there so it's connected up. And this area is not chunk loaded. That's something we're probably going to get into um, here very, very soon. <laughs> and we're going to take our energy transfer node and put this on there. And let's see, the chicken chunks loader... Yeah, these actually aren't even expensive at all at this point. Okay. I'll probably automate them because... I don't know. Do I want to automate them? Maybe. I'm going to give it some thought and we'll see. But, um... Oh, I got a red orchid seed. <laughs> awesome. Alright, so what we're going to do is we're going to take our GPS markers. We're just going to shift click. And actually inside of here, we're going to say... It's 15 by 15. We're going to say area. Um, it's going to try to harvest the entire area at a time. And if we hit preview, let me take a look here. This is the area that's going to be harvesting. So all the way out here, and it's going to be doing out to here. That's not a big issue um, because, of course, there's nothing here for it to harvest. And it's going to cover out to there. So that's good. So we'll just turn off the preview. You can change the size. Um, I'm going to leave it to always on because that's going to be fine. And we're going to set uh, we'll set the transfer right up. And we'll go ahead and drop our GPS marker into there. And this should have power. And if we give this just a second, boom, it just grabbed everything. So you can see we've got Inferium, Fire Essence, Ice Essence, Dirt Essence, Coal Essence, and Fertilized Essence uh, coming from this. Okay. And then we will pop over to here and hit this one with a GPS marker. And we'll drop it right into there. And this thing never renders correctly. Cyclic's funny like that. So um, pop over to here. Oh, it's set to single. So it only harvested one crop. But we want it on area. We want it to harvest the entire thing. It does take more energy, but energy is not really an issue for us. Okay, you can see we got a bunch of Inferium, Coal, Dirt, and Ice Essence. And this one over here is going to be a little bit more interesting because it harvests these, but it also harvests this big section here. So I've still got crops here. Two, three. This is actually 16 long. So, I mean, I could put one right in here. Um, I could also move the harvesters up, but I kind of want them hidden back in the walls uh, for what I'm planning um, in these areas. So um, it may not harvest, honestly, whenever this is all set up and done, it may not harvest every single crop, but I'm actually not really worried about that, to be perfectly honest. So it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter to me. So, um, okay, so that's, it's harvesting now. And now we need to handle the item collection. And before I do that, what I want to do, I've actually got um, these five things. Let me pop over. And one thing that I need to do is I need to make um, some void upgrades. And I meant to get uh, storage upgrades automated as well, but I'm going to go ahead and order 10 of the void upgrades. And I think we're at the point now where we could start making this is the one that I plan to automate and if you take a look here I've actually got this the tier 2 storage module automated because this was something I was originally planning on automating this between the episodes but I didn't get to it we're at the point now where we can start making these storage upgrades because they're not expensive and diamonds um, I actually had to break down some diamonds because I ran out between episodes but all I had to do was go get them from the ore processing system which we're going to be setting up the processing line probably next episode to handle um, the diamonds and we're going to be upgrading some of our auto processing for materials over there as well uh, next episode but um, we can make these now the the this one here the storage upgrade 5 I don't even think that we're ever going to bother with this because it's made so expensive um, in this pack because I mean that's two blocks of diamond for each of these dank nulls plus you need empowered restonia blocks 
and it, it's just a little bit more expensive than is needed I think so and I mean there's no recipe to make multiples you know they're just expensive as he is so um, I don't think I think we'll just stick with the diamond one because that's why I needed the gold dank null that's not that bad it just takes Osram um, which I need to go farm up more of that but we're going to be making that a little bit easier I think here soon so um, but void upgrades are cheap void upgrades are cheap enough so let's pop over here and we're going to apply some void upgrades to these because as we add things to farm it's going to be important that we have it set to void them um, so this right here I've bumped this up to 352 stacks at the moment but we're going to go ahead and if it fails we're going to void it now we're going to be setting up some auto processing one thing we're going to be doing um, in the upcoming episodes is we are going to be moving to um, not essence but uh, infusion we're going to be getting this at long last because this actually isn't that bad the main thing that was holding me back was the blocks of supremium essence and honestly I mean we've got a lot of essence built up you could see we've got uh, 25 stacks of pregentium I mean we could make a bit of supremium but I don't know if we'd have enough for four blocks right now because I mean that's you know that's a little bit of essence but I guess we could do everything in block form that seems like that only works with the master infusion crystal but we could upgrade them through blocks I don't know I don't know we'll see but um, anyways we're gonna be making that here soon but I want to make sure that I've got void upgrades I might actually want to upgrade that on storage but um, I tell you what, I'm just going to go through and apply void upgrades to all of our essences for now. And just for good measure, I'll throw that in there. So I've got a couple more slots where I can store stuff in. And that should be good. Okay, and actually I tell you what, because we're going to be farming some other stuff, I want to get the stuff that I use for my food um, automated. Oh, and there is one thing I forgot to talk about um, that I did between episodes. But let me go ahead and order 10 more of those and let's set up a couple more harvesters and the auto collection um, let's actually start with the auto collection so we're just going to use nodes for this so we're going to do an input node and then we'll pop over to here and drop an input node and we'll just connect that to that and then that well you know what I don't really need a master node for this I don't think no I really don't I really don't so let's just pop over here because we have um, inputs that are connected to the drawers or outputs I mean um, that are connected to the drawers and so I think what we'll do is we'll just connect it up we'll just connect it to this output right here you can see the distance these nodes work in I mean it's huge and that way it should be able to auto send all of its materials over to the storage building <clears throat> and we can save on nodes because I'll need these for other things but see it's taken everything now so awesome we now have some auto farming going on and then over here um, I guess I'll start over here I've got uh, three yeah let's start over here then let's do we'll do a harvester setting there and you'll notice these little channels, this oh, that was actually planned correctly. And uh, this is built, so there's five, six, seven, eight, and then uh, 13 blocks, plus the wall blocks. There's 14 blocks um, of space, so it's like just big enough that it's going to harvest all the way across on this. So, um, And then over here, drop that in right there. And that way we can have all of our harvesting here but it's kind of like tucked away so it's not in our way so to speak um, let me pop over here let me get those void upgrades and actually I'll probably go ahead and order a few more like another 10 sounds good we're gonna be automating food here soon and seed oil and all those good things very very soon okay all those are covered now which should be good and we're probably gonna upgrade food here soon also Okay, and all we got to do to connect these up is, oh, I actually counted from the wrong side on this one. So let's pull that up. 
drop the harvester there. Okay. And then once again, we'll grab the GPS. Drop that there, and let's say area. And then over to here. Input node. There we go, that's plugged up. Input node. Connect. Awesome. Okay, and these should be... Okay, so if we take a look out here, there we go. These fields are being farmed and the items are being deposited, which is a lot of my food stuff. Um, also wheat seeds, we're going to be, wheat and wheat seeds we're going to be using here soon. And, um, and yeah, and then some other random crops that were over there <laughs> are being farmed. Now this line right here, I'm not going to worry about this one right this second because I don't use these essences all that much. Um, I will set up harvesters, but I'm not going to right this second because I only made five. I'll order some more. Um, but those aren't high priority. What is high priority, though, is this one right over here. And honestly, the the fact that it's high priority is mainly due to the fact that um, it farms Electrotein Essence, because I use that for the ingots. But also the rubber seeds and the mystical flower seeds, I use a bit. I used to use the iron and copper, but not anymore. Um, so that's just kind of extras. But the rubber and Electrotein, I definitely want that in the mystical flowers. Uh, will be useful as well so but we'll go ahead and grab that there we go and then we'll hit this with a GPS marker and we'll just connect that up to the output and I did set that to stack right I think so yeah or, I mean area not stack but you get the idea and then we'll just drop the coordinates into the GPS marker. Okay, so we still have enough space just off this one energy transfer node for four more um, locations. So it does nine um, per GPS or per energy transfer. Now you can also do the same thing with items and you can do the same thing with uh, fluids if you want. You know, I have the fluid one set up on interactions. And actually I have a few fluid ones set up on interactions now. but. <laughs> Um, right now, the only one I really need on here is the energy, I think, um, because nodes cover the items and the fluids pretty well. So, um, Okay, so now that that's in place, let's pop back up here. And as far as the essences go, I'm just going to let them build up. I'm going to add maybe some storage upgrades to those so they can store more. Um, but one thing we can do is we can set up recipes for um, like Electrotene Essence is like that and we'll encode I'm not gonna worry about letting it turn into electrotene though because we're getting that from the the miner so uh, at least for the automatic system I'm not gonna worry about that uh, rubber we're also gonna be setting up these the latex processing units um, here soon there's actually a quest for that but then also um, but also we're getting to where we're going to need it as well so um, okay, so there's rubber. Of course, that's for making our glue compound. Let's see, essence. We've got ice essence. So I gotta figure out. Which actually, I guess we don't really need a glacial precipitator because we do have the ice essence. And then um, I've taught it the recipe for using the ice, and so we'll just teach you how to make ice. There's that. And then I think I think I already did. Yeah, see, I did the. Uh, the flowers already because I was using these for dyes and so I went ahead and just automate all those and I automated the petals as well um, I didn't automate the dyes themselves but we're gonna do that here soon or I'm gonna do it one or the other um, depending on if I, how I go about it you know and then let's see let's teach it dirt essence um, even though I don't have the dirt being farmed just yet I will soon and so I should probably go ahead and teach it that. And we'll just dump that stuff into there. And I need to order more crafters. Oh, which actually I've got three in here. So this will be fine. Um, there we go. And you can have that. These crafters are for the next thing that we're going to work on. But before we get into that. Um, actually one thing I forgot to go over at the start of the episode. Is I did complete a few quests here. 
Uh, the furnace generator, I went ahead and made that. It, we get a motor, a diamond, and gold coin. The culinary generator, I have not done yet. The reason being, um, this thing is going to require that we actually get into some food because we need supreme pizza and gourmet beef burger, and we will need to get into that um, in order to make the culinary generator, which is a main quest. <laughs> There's honestly, like, it seems like every single main quest line has just a ton of power related stuff. Um, which power isn't even, you don't even need that much power in this pack so far. But there's so many power quest lines. Um, the potion of strength, we get, oh, and we did complete this potion, but I turned it in because I needed the other awkward potion sale just to make my life a little bit easier while I was crafting all these potions. So potion of strength, we get 64 yellow concrete, two glistening melons, and a silver coin. Um, and of course these you can either make through the, um, the alchemical imbuer, or you can just use a normal potion brewing stand. So, um, then potion of strength, we get five wood casings, glowstone, and silver coin. Uh, these are for stronger. It, it basically has us making all these different types of potions of strength. Um, we get a splash potion of night vision, 15 arrows of slowness, and a silver coin. And then splash potions of strength. We get a splash potion of leaping, 10 arrows of pushing, a silver coin, and a gold coin. And then, okay, I've still got a little bit of room in my inventory. And then they wanted us to make a potion shelf. We get either five potion shelves, two splash potions of strength, or 15 arrows. So I'm going to take these uh, oak potion shelves. That was one of those big, like, random quest lines <laughs> that we were never going to use. The reinforced alloy, um, of course, we've made this stuff before. We get two deluxe chicken curry and Orpington chick spawn egg. Uncommon loot bag and four copper coins. And then the numis, uh, numismatic dynamo, we get a gold coin and a platinum coin from that. Um, also, um, on the topic of Animania, it seems like the animals have stopped spawning. Since I turned off the natural spawns and the breeding um, only by hand, they seem like they have stopped spawning. I haven't had any pop up in the base. Um, so that's good. That's a good sign. But uh, the fluid pump, we get two fluid laser relays, a rare loot bag, and a gold coin. Um, slag, of course we have this, we've had this for a while. We get three slag, three saltpeter. Um, the solar panel tier three, we get a solar panel tier two, two rare loot bags, two basic control circuits, or two tier one storage modules. I'm going to take the solar panel two. Um, the pulverized obsidian and vanadium dusts, we get four obsidian, two vanadium, or eight living rock. I'm going to take the four obsidian. Hardened glass, we get hardened glass, four oak bookshelves, and a silver coin. And my inventory is getting there. Which I need to find something to spend my coins on because they're piling up and there's not really much in the reward area that I want to buy. So, um, copper tank, we get another copper tank, a block of gold, or two platinum ingots. Um, we'll take, I don't know, the block of gold. Because even though I have automatic gold, I do eat through gold. Um, whenever I start cranking away at stuff, I can eat through gold at a decent rate. So, I guess. <laughs> I don't know, it still tends to keep up because I'm like building or... Oh, and the solar panel tier 3 is right outside of there. So... Um, but anyways, that catches us up a little bit on the main quest. Um, this stuff right here we're actually going to start getting into here soon. This is pretty much identical um, to the methane gas system in the way that it works, but uh, I still want to get into it because we've got plastic sheets being passively made downstairs, but it's not a high enough chance and it doesn't run consistently enough to be the main source of plastic. So um, the... We had a bit of it, but it's starting to kind of dwindle, and so we're gonna we're gonna be working on some latex processing units here soon. Okay, and with that in place, um, now that the harvesting is set up, um, let's go ahead and mark off the auto farming and processing because I think that's how I'm gonna handle that stuff. I just have to expand on it. Um, I will say that in the coming episodes, we're gonna be knocking off a lot of this stuff um, rather quickly like doing a couple things each episode. So like the stone mega expansion, we're just going to quickly move through that. Um, I'll prep up the machine, so it's only going to take a few minutes to set that up. Animal farms will start up here fairly soon. 
We're going to start into some Master Sorcery. We're going to get some bees automation going. Uh, that might even be next episode. We'll see. Chunk loaders, we're just going to briefly cover those like a minute tops. <laughs> um, I'm going to automate those and we're going to start setting those up next episode because that is something that we need to get into. Um, expand on Evil Craft, we're going to start working on that. The horse purge, we're about to do that here real quick. Uh, like I said, it's just going to be a short little time lapse thing if you want to see a bunch of horses die because there are some places where it's starting to get really laggy and they need to die. You know, they're built up on the walls. So, uh, Main power system, we're going to be doing that. It's not going to take very long. The forestry building work will start in before too long uh, for the actual forestry related stuff, which will mainly be, be it'll tie into the bees. Blood magic automation we're going to do soon or processing mark two. We're probably going to do next episode the auto tinker alloys. We're probably going to do next episode and the auto lava next episode. So those three things kind of all go hand in hand. Well, these two things and this sort of, and, and then we'll do the chunk loaders, and yeah. So we'll do like at least like four things the next episode, and then the auto batania we're going to do uh, here fairly soon as well. Okay. So uh, with that said, I'm going to do just a short, uh, like maybe like five minutes. If you just want to see a bunch of horses die um, and cows and things like that, then you can watch it. It's just going to be sped up footage. But you know, if you're interested in seeing a bunch of them die, because um, I know I had I had a couple people say that I had to do this on camera. So I'm going to do a little bit of it on camera, uh, not all of it, because it's going to take a while. So, but about five minutes or so. So um, anyways, I'll be back.
Okay, so that's at least a bit more off the walls. Um, I mean, there's, they're not pushed up against the walls anymore. I've still got a bit more clearing to do, but uh, we're getting their we're getting the horde numbers down a lot better to more reasonable amounts for the most part. Um, I mean, there's st <laughs> there's still so many. There's still so many, and I will say that if you let the animals build up, I don't think I got any that time around. Oh yeah, there we go. Legendary loot bags. If you're into the loot bag thing, which, as you know, I absolutely hate it, but uh, if you're into it, that's actually the 6th or 7th, 6th or 7th legendary loot bag that I've got from killing the hordes of animals that spawn up outside. So if you like legendary loot bags, you can just let them spawn like that to crazy amounts, and uh, they seem to be... I don't know if they're necessarily a good source of legendary loot bags. Like, I don't know if they have like increased rates or something like that. Um, or if it's just because you're killing so many of them. Um, I'm thinking it's just because you're killing so many of them. But uh, they are, they do tend to drop a lot of them as you're clearing them out. So, um, there's been times I'll go out and clear and get like two, um, you know, in, in a single durability bar of my sword, which isn't terrible 858 on durability but I do have uh, one modifier so I could I need to stick the unbreaking on there or start start making some of these um, you know we're actually at the point where we could make this without too much issue so um, but I'll probably go ahead and just automate it whenever I do so I'm probably not gonna worry about making it right now because I want it on most of my tools so um, but anyways, I do believe that I'm going to end out this episode here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and mark off um, the horse purge off of this list. I still have a little bit more purging to do, but as you can tell, I think that's, uh, that's probably my fifth run through there um, of going through and actually like using some ingots to repair stuff. Um, I got most of the ones off this wall the other day. So, and then, you know, whenever I put up these walls, I cleared out a lot of them as well. And, you know, it's just one of those things. But uh, I tell you what, though, if you need animal drops, you will get all you can need of a lot of these things. But yeah, so, plus you get a ton of XP as well. So, um, but anyways, I'm, I'm going to end out this episode here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. And if you did, as always... Be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay up to date with when new videos come out. Um, like I said, most of the stuff now that we've got, we've got everything automated. Most of the stuff's going to move pretty quick through the rest of the checklist. So we're going to start just knocking through quite a few things to, uh, in the next episode. So we'll probably do, you know, chances are like four plus things in the next episode off of our checklist. So, um, But anyways, I hope you guys join me for that. And I hope you guys enjoyed the episode, and until next time, as always, do take care, stay safe, I'll see you guys then.